All right, let's talk about a big beast. This is the Dwayne Dwayne Dwyer BBN L. I believe it's a discontinued model that Mike down in Australia was able to find and bought and graciously sent to me first and with a couple of other knives that I'm going to film and then I can send down to him in the land down under because this is a knife that needs some breaking in. So it does run on phosphor bronze washers. This is new. It's discontinued, but it's new. Um, so it's still breaking in. And actually, when I look deep down in, it's got some kind of a green type of grease lube in there. And it's, it's not super smooth. And I don't know if that is from the grease that was used or if it just needs break-in time or what. So I'm not going to take it apart. I'll let Mike take it apart when he gets it, if he so chooses. And maybe after another couple of hundred opens and closes, it will be fine and work its way out, and it doesn't need to be opened and op or taken apart. I don't know. So this looks very Strider-esque, if you will, because... Dwayne and Mick Strider used to work together way back in the early days. I've talked about that in other videos. Not going to go into that whole history right now. And there's a lot of information out there on YouTube and the internet that talks about that relationship and all that good stuff. So I will let you guys go and figure that out on your own if you want to know the details. So let's talk about the specs. One of the things I really do like about this is, and let's just zoom in first, it's a chisel grind. So what that means is there's only grind lines and bevels on one side. The other side is just completely flat. I like the way that looks. I think it looks cool. From the top profile, you can see that it really only bevels down on one side. So it's very cool looking. I think it's great. It's a nice finish on the blade. Some laser etching, I think is what this all is on the scales. A big fat Dwyer Custom Knives logo. Uh, you know, we'll talk about billboarding and branding here in just a second. American flag on the clip. Lock bar stabilizer or over travel stop. There is no lock bar insert. They've carbonized the end of the titanium so that it just doesn't get lock stick. They've got the blade steel etched in the back. So you know what it is. If you look for it, you can tell that this is Magna Cut. So closed length, you got five and one eighth inches. Overall, is nine inches, 3.92 inch blade, 0 0.014 behind the edge, uh, 6.8 ounces. So it's not for the lightweight guys. Overall thickness is 0.529 and it runs, like I said, on phosphor bronze washers. Now, I'm hoping that as this breaks in, it's kind of, honestly, the, the action, right now is kind of Medford-ish, where they take a while to break in. Once they break in, the Medfords are generally very smooth. Some models are not as smooth as others for some reason, because I've had a lot of Medfords. I haven't had every model, but I've had most models. So yes, they take a while to break in, and you gotta sit there and you open and close it, and you watch a movie and you open and close it a hundred times and you annoy the hell out of your wife or girlfriend. And then it's broken in after that. So this may just break in. I don't know. The green goop inside makes me a little nervous that it may or may not. So, but that's something for Mike to, to work with. 
does have a big, huge finger choil here. You lose a lot of the edge. So I mentioned that the blade is 3.92 inches long, but only 3.2 inches of cutting edge. You lose almost an inch here in the big finger choil and then the generous sharpening choil. I don't know how I feel about that. I'm not all into blade length and edge length and all of that. I don't know that that's necessarily the end-all be-all for me. But I, I don't know. That's, that's just their style. That is the style of all the Striders, all of the Dwayne Dwyers. That's just how it is. Made to use with gloves, you know, very military focused and things like that. Cool. Not a problem. So let's talk about it with the Sharpie. A more normal sized Spyderco Delica. Maybe the uh, Hellraiser P-Series. The Skaha version 2. And then let's jump back to this branding here on the scale. Not my favorite, but it's pretty subdued. And it does, it's not in your face. You got to get the lighting kind of right. You know there's something there, but the lighting has to be right to really be able to see what it is. So, eh, I, I'm not a big fan of branding on knives. If you want to have like the Spyderco logo, sure. The Hellraiser or the Red Horse Knife Works logo on the blade, sure. The subdued spider on the pocket clip, okay. A lot of other knives, you're going to have the whole brand written on the pocket clip. You're going to have a big thing here. You might have something big on the blade. Like, I'm not a huge fan of that. But to each his own. All in all... This is not a knife for me for a number of reasons that I think you can already understand. And not to overlook the obvious, but the elephant in the room is the blade steel on the blade. I'm at a loss for words. I know that you're proud of Magna Cut. Why? That alone ruins it for me personally. Somebody might love it. Uh, Mike spent money to buy this, so I'm not going to talk too much crap. But so that you didn't forget, they etched Magna Cut into the backside, and then they laser it, lasered it in, I don't know, maybe they hit the wrong font on the laser machine. And they meant to hit small, not extra large. I, I don't know. It, yeah. Did you guys really think I was not going to mention the Magna Cut on the blade? <laughs> I almost didn't. Not a, on a purpose. I almost just skipped it. But yeah, I just I had to say something. Anyway, thanks for watching.